Amin? Cu adevărat, mă simt ca acasă, într-un fel, și dacă mă simt ca acasă, aș vrea ca cele două extreme, stânga și dreapta, să, să dispară de acolo, nu scaunele, dar dumneavoastră să veniți pe partea de mișto. Vă rog frumos. Și în timpul ăsta dați și mâna. Ok, would you please, left and right, those the, the two ones I can see you. Then that's, that's how. If you're not going to invite me again next time, that's fine with me. I can rest when I come to L.A. But would you please come in the two in front, okay? Especially there is a youth night. That's, that's good. Tineri. Aveți tineri extraordinari. Dumnezeu să-i binecuvinteze. Amen? Like an encouragement. Uh, uh, I was thinking very hard and long to, for the sermon, for the subject tonight. And interesting, I chose two or three different uh, subjects, but God put in my heart something that has to do with weaknesses. Slăbiciuni. And tonight was read from the scripture that the Holy Spirit helps us in our what? Weaknesses. Uh, I want to encourage the youth. You know, I'm from Portland. Uh, Abel, Tila e aici, îl binecuvintez. Uh, last weekend a fost la noi în Portland, ne-am bucurat împreună cu el. Uh, I encourage the youth to come to Tuesday night, youth. It started slow from 10, 15 people, but at this moment, when you give your life, you give it all to Christ. Right now, there are 80, 90 youth on Tuesday night. Different nationalities. We, we had a water baptism. Normally, I don't do this, but in, in this church, I do. A uh, Chinese girl got baptized. Now, an African-Americans, uh, people want to get baptized. I'm going to meet with them next week. And we want to be in God's will, okay? God brought us here. Some of us are not that young anymore, but our happiness is to see your generation serving God. Amen? Then do not give up. Stay together. Pray fast, simple things, and believe that God will do great things in Agape Church here. Amen? Like he does in any church where people are consecrating their lives to Christ. I'm going to speak tonight about using your weaknesses. Foloseșteți slăbiciunea, limitările. Because there is one thing that I observed, giving you a background for 20 years I was a youth pastor in a bigger church in, in Portland at Philadelphia. Then we have, believe it or not, in November, we're going to have 11 years from the year when we opened Agape Bible Church in Portland. And what I see today, Christianity especially, they are understanding not correctly what the Bible talks about somebody to give their lives to Christ and start serving. I speak with the youth, especially with young men and young women, and they are telling me, Pastor Avram, I cannot serve because I have a weakness. I have a limitation. Uh, I need time, and that time for some never come. Three years passes by, five years, ten years, twenty years. By the time they wake up and they realize that God is using every single one, even in our weaknesses, It's too late for them. And they say, well, I'm too old now. And my prayer is that in today's generation, younger generation, you will give your life completely to Christ. And let him use your life. Amen? Uh, using your weaknesses. Uh, Luke chapter 6, verse 6 to 10. King James. It's okay. And it came to pass also on another Sabbath that he entered into the synagogue and taught. And there was a man whose right hand was withered. And the scribes and Pharisees watched him, whether he would heal on the Sabbath day, that they might find an accusation against him, meaning against Christ. But he knew their thoughts and said to the man which had the withered hand, Rise up and stand forth in the midst. And he arose and stood forth. Then said Jesus unto them, I will ask you one thing. It is lawful on the Sabbath days to do good or to do evil, to save life or to destroy it. And looking round about upon them all, he said unto the man, Stretch forth your hand. And he did so, and his hand was restored, whole as the other. Amen. 
Then, like I said, my subject is using your weaknesses. Dumnezeu vrea să ne folosească chiar în limitările și în slăbiciunile noastre. I'm not sure how much you will understand because this subject that I'm going to preach about, you need years and years to understand the true meaning of allowing God to work into your weaknesses. The dangerous Christianity and theology is this, that I think I'm good enough to serve God. And it's not that. God wants your whole heart. And he wants you to trust him with all your heart. Every one of us has weaknesses. And I'm going to name a few of them. They are physical weaknesses, emotional weaknesses, relational weaknesses, financial weaknesses, intellectual weaknesses. They are things your body cannot do. We all have different kinds of weaknesses. Just look in your life and around you. We all have weaknesses. The real issue is not, do I have weaknesses? Do I have slăbiciuni? But what I am going to do with my weaknesses? What we normally do is deny them. And that is the problem, and I'm going to speak to the young generation. We deny them, we defend them, we excuse them, resent them, and most of all, hide them. We don't want anybody to see our weaknesses, our limitations. Then God comes along and says, you know what I want to do with your weaknesses, with your limitations? I want to use them. That doesn't make sense to Christianity in 2016. We think God only wants to use our strengths. Sometimes we do not understand what God wants from us. When God, when we think that God is using only our strengths, in time, in service, we think that it's because us, because what I know, because what I am, because what I accomplished. That's why God is using me. But God is telling you tonight, you have limitations, you have weaknesses, I want to use them. I want to use them. Isaiah 55, verse 8 and 9. This plan of mine is not what you would work out, neither are my thoughts the same as yours. For just as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than yours, and my thoughts than yours. Isaia 5, 5, 8, 9. Căci gândurile mele nu sunt gândurile voastre, și căile voastre nu sunt căile mele, zice Domnul, ci cât sunt de sus cerurile față de pământ, atât sunt de sus căile mele față de căile voastre și gândurile voastre față de gândurile, și gândurile mele față de gândurile voastre. God is smarter than you and me. Amen? He is. The way you think he should work is often the exact opposite of the way he really works in life. This is my experience. Sometimes, just by serving God and being a youth pastor for so many years, and I'm going to give, I'll be very practical. I worked 20 years as a youth pastor in Philadelphia Church. When the time was to open a church, you know what I thought, and I'm going to confess. I thought, and I'm ready. I think this church that we're going to open, it was God's will, because he spoke to us through his word and prophecies. But I thought about me that I was ready, because I had that experience of 20 years. Guess what? We opened the church. You know what I realized? One, two, three years later, I bought a, a, a portable bed. And night after night, many nights, not even cleaning shore knows. I put that bed there, and I kneeled down, and I cried out to God. I said, God, I don't know how to pastor this church. I have limitations. I thought I learned so much in 20 years, but God works in strange ways. He wants us to see our limitations, and when a Christian, when a young person is honest with God, and you confess to him that you have weakness, and limitations, he's going to come in your life and use your limitation and weakness for his glory. Amen? This is God. 
It's completely different than some preachers, the way they preach. He says, I don't want to work around your weaknesses. I don't want to work in spite of your weaknesses. I want to work through your weaknesses, to your, through your limitations. 1 Corinthians 1, 27. God purposely chose what the world considers nonsense in order to shame the wise. And he chose what the world considers weak in order to shame the powerful. Dar Dumnezeu a ales lucrurile nebune ale lumii ca să le facă de rușine pe cele înțelepte. Dumnezeu a ales lucrurile slabe ale lumii ca să facă de rușine pe cele tari. God purposely works through weak people. My question is tonight, tonight is, who is weak tonight? Here in, in, in Agape Church, I'm going to tell you, I am weak. But he purposely wants to work through weak people. Why? Because it shows his power. God is not impressed with strength. We are. We're looking for churches, we're looking for preachers, we're looking for, for, for leaders with huge strengths and gifts. But God, many times, doesn't look for that. He looks for somebody who recognizes, God, this is who I am. This is what I can do. This is my limitation. But you can be big in me and you can use my limitation for your glory. Amen? Don't look that there is a youth department somewhere in another church or in American church or in the Romanian church. My God, they do. God is doing great things there. He can do same and even greater things in this church. Amen? If you come before him with your limitations and your weaknesses and your honors with him and you tell him, God, use them. Zechariah 4, 6. Not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, said the Lord of hosts. Lucrul acesta nu se face nici prin putere, nici prin tărie, ci prin Duhul meu, zice Domnul oștirilor. That's good news, because most of us are not extraordinary people. We're not. We don't have extraordinary intellect. There are not that many. We're just normal, average people. God says, that's okay. Because I don't choose to work through natural strength. I chose to work through natural weaknesses so that my power can shine through. Why God has worked so mightily and powerful in our parents or grandparents? Let's look at them a little bit. The most, I look in my family, my father had chapter class. My, my mom had patru clase. And înaintașii noștri, your grandparents, some of them, they had no school. But you know what they had? They had a great God, and they went before the God with their weaknesses and limitations, and they were humbling themselves before the Lord, and the Lord God used them mightily. Amen? And many people came to Christ because they accepted And they recognized who they are. When we talk about weaknesses, uh, weakness, weakness, we're not talking about sins or character flaws. They want to make sure. We're going to talk about how God is using you and me through our weaknesses, prin slăbiciun, prin limitații. But slăbiciunea nu e păcat. Nu e un caracter care nu e cristic. No, I'm not talking about that. We're not talking about sins or character flaws that you can change. Like what? Greed, laziness, impatience, and so on. Weakness, if I were to give a definition, is this. Weakness is any limitation in my life that I inherited or cannot change. That is weakness. Slăbiciunea este orice limitare din viața mea pe care o moștenesc sau nu o pot schimba. And this is our God and he is so great. He can use somebody născut în slăbiciune, în limitări, în familia în care s-au născut, în felul în care sunt, Dumnezeu poate să-i folosească mightly, slăbit să fie numele Său. There are all kinds of limitations like that. Physical defects. 
external circumstances you cannot control, unexpected financial setbacks, relationship pressures within your family, emotion, emotional tendencies you are predisposed toward. Some talents are completely beyond your ability. We have youth, we want to have good singers. But before we looking for good singers, we look for young men and women who are going to give their entire life to God, even in their limitations and weaknesses. And God can use them. Amen? 2 Corinthians 4, 7. We have this treasure from God, but we are like clay jars that hold the treasure. This shows that the great power is from God, not from us. Cum oară aceasta o purtăm în niște vase de lut, pentru că această putere nemaipomenită să fie de la Dumnezeu și nu de la noi. The thing about clay pots is that they break easily. They are not indestructible. But more than that, every clay pot has inherited design flaws. It is imperfect, like that one. We are just ordinary containers but we have a great God. Amen? Someone wrote a book entitled God Uses Cracked Pots with the kind of person God wants to use. And why I chose this subject? Because I see in my own kids and I see in the youth that somehow we think that God can use only the ones who are extraordinary, excellent qualities, financial set, rich parents. Hey, it's good. All of those are blessings. But let me tell you something. That God can use somebody with great limitations for his glories. He can use it. He can use it. The question is, how can I use my weaknesses? Cum pot să-mi folosesc slăbiciunea? Încă o dată, slăbiciunea nu-i păcat și nu-i probleme de caracter, ci limitări și slăbiciuni care noi de multe ori vrem să le ascundem, we don't want to talk about it, le punem sub preș, sub pat, and God cannot work in our lives. Cum pot să-mi folosesc? How can I use my weaknesses? Number one, admit my weaknesses. Să-mi admit slăbiciunea. That's number one. Tonight is a youth night. When the youth of this church and in Agape where I pastor in Portland and all of us, we admit our weaknesses and we come before the Lord and we ask Him to work in our lives. He's going to come and He's going to pour down His Holy Spirit and He's going to use every single one in mighty ways. Amen? Did, how can you use your weaknesses? Number one, admit them. The starting point is to stop pretending you've got it all together. You have to stop. You generations. God is, God is in a God that shapes us and forms us. It's like somebody goes to a Bible school and he comes and his head is huge and big and has so much knowledge, but that's not enough. That person is a weak vessel. In your service in church, you will discover that you have so many limitations. What do you do with them? Admit them. Admit them. Because if, because you don't, if you do not admit, nobody does. Stop hoping that your weaknesses will go away if you just ignore them. Do not ignore them. Tonight is your night to come before the Lord and say, this is my limitation, God. I want to serve you, but you know my limitation. Sometimes we, we raise our kids in our own family, and as parents, we don't know the limitations of our kids. We should talk to them more about it. We should ask them, or you should ask your friend in the youth group, why don't you want to be involved more? Be a friend. Open your heart. Speak with them about your limitations and weaknesses, and you will see how that person will open up with his, hers, limitation and weaknesses. But admit them. Stop making excuse, excuses or blaming others for your weaknesses. Stop. Don't do that. You've tried all that. And it hasn't worked. Insanity is doing the same thing over and over and expecting a different result. Just admit that you have weaknesses. 
You know, in my experience, in service, because normally the subject that I preach has to do with service. Sometimes God has to bring something in our lives to get us to admit our weaknesses. And I see this in so many Christians and servants and pastors and deacons and leaders. He's allowing some things in your life and in my life because he wants us to admit our weaknesses. That is called a crisis. A crisis is a a weakness identifier. Okay? But don't wait for a crisis. Crisis. Do not wait. It's far less painful to identify your weaknesses and admit them up front than having to go through crisis after crisis for God to get you to admit, I'm not God. I don't have it all together. In a way, I do need to apologize. When I speak in English, I'm writing more in my papers. It's not like the ones who were born here. But in order for you to be used mightily by God, you have to admit your weaknesses. If I were to give you a white paper and a piece like you have, some of you, and congratulations, they take notes. Just write there, God, my name is Avram Bergiano. This is my limitation. This is my weakness. But God, I want you to use me. The first step that you and I, we need to do. And here, here is the thing. Not only, this is not only for the ones who want to get in ministry. This is for the pastors too. We want the church to grow. We want to do this. We have so many programs and we want to invent so many things and nothing happens. You know, God maybe does not allow to grow yet till you And me and I admit that I'm weak. Then God will do his work. The number one, admit your weakness. Number two, be grateful for your weaknesses. Să fiu mulțumitor pentru slăbiciunea mea, pentru limitarea mea. This is not easy. To be grateful for your weakness. You've got to be kidding. I want to come to church and take a magic pill to get rid of all my weaknesses. I don't want you to tell me to be grateful for them. I want to be free from all of them. This is the Christian today. This is the generation that rises up today. Be grateful for your weaknesses. And I'm going to read... Verses that speaks about that. 2 Corinthians 12, 8, 9. And if it's in English there, I'm going to read it in Romanian. De trei ori am rugat pe Domnul să mi-l ia. Ce să ia? Țepușul. Ok? Și el mi-a zis, harul meu îți este de ajuns, căci puterea mea în ce? În slăbiciune este făcută de săvârșită. Ok? Deci mă voi lăuda mult mai bucuros cu ce? Cu darurile? With my gifts? With my intellect? And I'm going to speak to the youth. For many, many years I was reading this verse. I said, what's happening? This is not what the world is teaching us. The ones who are outside. Mă voi lăuda mai mult mai bucuros cu slăbiciunile mele pentru ca puterea lui Hristos să rămână în mine. Be grateful for your limitations, for your weaknesses. Why in the world would anybody do that? Because there are many benefits. Weaknesses are actually blessings in disguise. Apostolul Pavel a avut o slăbiciune. A avut un țăpuș, Dumnezeu, el se roagă, Doamne, scapă-mă! Și el zice, nu, harul meu ți este de ajuns. Be grateful for your weaknesses. Fii mulțumitor pentru, pentru slăbiciunea ta. Why should I be grateful for my weaknesses? And that's the question is, de ce să fiu mulțumitor pentru slăbiciunea mea, pentru limitările mele? Frații mei, dacă vom înțelege adevărul acesta, să fii mulțumitor lui Dumnezeu pentru slăbiciune, pentru slăbiciunea ta, să știți că Dumnezeu peste noapte poate să ne folosească într-un mod extraordinar. Nu vă pot explica, 
dar s-a întâmplat cu mine. N-ați încercat? Didn't you try? Didn't you guys try a youth to have more youth coming to church and you prepared and you've done and you said now it's and nothing happened? And all of a sudden, when you went in your own room, in odăița ta at home, and you start crying and praying and saying, God, I'm weak, I cannot do it, the next Tuesday, fire came down, the Holy Spirit came down, because it's something about admitting your weaknesses and being grateful for them. Să fii mulțumitori. Why should I be grateful for my weaknesses? Number one, it guarantees God's help. Guarantees. That's the difference between the church and the world. When I come before the Lord sincere, open, this is my limitation. Okay, I sing in the worship, but God, my voice, it's not the way it's supposed to. And you admit, and you're grateful. It guarantees God's help. Garantează ajutorul lui Dumnezeu pentru cel care recunoaște în mod personal. Asta e slăbiciunea mea. Asta e limitarea mea. Look what God said. God and Paul. God, 2 Corinthians 12, 9. But I am with you. That is all you need. My power shows up best in weak people. Și el mi-a zis, harul meu îți este de ajuns, căci puterea mea în slăbiciune este făcută de săvârșită. And Paul, in, in verse 10, second part, For when I am weak, then I am strong. The less I have, the more I depend on him. Căci când sunt slab, atunci sunt tare. Slăvit să fie Domnul. Am experimentat noi lucrurile astea? Is this what Christianity in America is teaching us? No. I'm sorry to say, we're not hearing preachings and subjects like this. When I'm weak, then sunt tare. De ce? Pentru că mă recunosc înaintea lui Dumnezeu. Recunosc că depind 100% de Dumnezeu. I depend on Him. Recunosc că I am weak. Like I said, you finish two schools, three schools, you have gifts, you have whatever it is, but if you do not Stand before the Lord and say, even though you gave me gifts, I'm still weak, God. You work through my weaknesses, to my limitations. It guarantees God's help. If you prayed repeatedly for God to take something away and he hasn't, it's probably a weakness. Many times, it's prob- probably a limitation. He might be saying, why in the world would I take it away? If you could solve all your problems and meet all your needs, how much would you depend on me? And we pray. And we have a theology today that in Jesus' name, yes, many things, all things can be done. But what about when God in his knowledge and wisdom allows in your life and in my life un push? A limitation to depend on him. It guarantees God's help. Number two. Why should I be grateful for my weaknesses? It prevents arrogance. Mândrie. Te ferește de aroganță, de mândrie. De aia Dumnezeu îngăduie în viețile noastre. Și uneori nu vrem să recunoaștem. Many times we don't want to recognize. We hide them. Vorbești cu creștini, you speak with Christians, with youth, with old. We do not want to recognize. Because it's very hard to say, I have limitations. When was the last time in youth group that you went to your leader or you're speaking, talking with each other and say, hey, I have limitations. Would you please pray for me that God will help me? In my limitations? And give me strength and wisdom and results? Why should I be grateful for my, my, my limitations? Because it prevents arrogance. Second Corinthians 12, 7. To keep me from becoming considered because of, the, of this surpassing great revelations. There was given me a thorn in my flesh, a messenger of Satan to torment me. 
Și ca să nu mă umflu de mândrie din pricina strălucirii acestor descoperiri, mi-a fost pus un țepuș în carne, un sol al satanei care să mă pălmoiască și să mă împiedice să mă îngâmf. Unbelievable! This is almost, hey, this is not for the youth. Yeah, it's for the youth. Youth has a great future. Amen? I can't say some of the older generation, if I may, say this way, said, well, the youth, there has no future. No, you do have a great future. But when it, you know where it starts? By going before the Lord and recognizing that you have limitations and you're weak and you're going to depend on Him 100% and He will use your weaknesses and limitations mightily. Because I've seen so many people, people who had struggled even to speak and by their words and actions in a coffee shop or at soccer field, The way they used, they were used by God, people came to Christ through these people. Și nu dai mulți bani pe ei. S-a sunoscut într-o familie, ai, vai de el. No. It prevents arrogance. What is a thorn? It is a weakness or a limitation I cannot change that causes me pain and apparently limits my ministry. Apparently. Thorns are given by God, so they are not sins. Do not go that direction. Some thorns are temporary, some are removed gradually, and some you have for a lifetime, like Paul. Pentru că Dumnezeu ne cunoaște. He knows you and me. Let's say you have a gift, and you're called, and you were predestined to serve, because I do believe in predestination in service. Not in mântuire, but in service. And God sees you. Today you're a youth leader or a worship leader. But God that knows your life will allow some thorns in your life to keep you humbled. And that's not like, okay, if I have a limitation in my life, a thorn in my life, I'm not good. No. God allows temporary or maybe for some for the rest of their lives. To humble us. What does a thorn do? It causes me enough pain that I rem- remain humble and dependent of God. Do we understand this? Because I, I have friends, I have pastor friends, Romanian, Americans, all kinds of nationalities, and what I hear from some of them is that if you're a Christian, you have it all. Two, three weeks ago, I spoke with a pastor who has over 7,000 people, and I spoke about thorns, and he said, Hey, Abraham, you just came out under the rock. You're old-fashioned. I said, What do you mean, old-fashioned? I am not. Just ask other Christians and churches. No, I am not. But I do believe very strongly in humility and limitations and weaknesses that we need to come with those before the Lord and ask Him to help us to serve Him well. And He's blessing us. It causes me enough pain that I remain humble and dependent on God. If God is ever going to use you in a great way, expect a thorn. Youth, hear me well. Do you hear me what I'm saying tonight? How many of you wanted to be used greatly by God? Raise your hand. Everyone, Krini. Expect a thorn in your life. Start serving, preaching, singing, do ministry, helping, whatever service and callings you have. But if you really give 100% your life to God, He might, I'm not saying you will, but He might give you a thorn. And to push a limitation, something in your life to keep you humbled. Câți din frații mai în vârstă înțeleg adevărul care le-am zis eu mână sus? Fraților, o înțelegem. Și noi nu mai venim, we're not coming to church when a thorn comes in our lives. We serve in God when everything goes good, when a thorn is allowed by God in my life. 
Others are looking at me and said, Abraham, you're not a child of God. There is a sin in your life. You're the only one to know if it's sin or not. But you go and you, you're not coming to church anymore. You come every second or third Sunday. Why? There is something in order to serve mightily God. And if you give your life 100% to God, expect a turn. We ordain people. We're, we're, we're pushing people. Okay, work for God. Work for his kingdom. But the package, the entire package, has also one or two or three sapushuri. Turns. But we don't like them. And sometimes God is using the pastor to give you a turn. I have no idea. I don't want to do it. But, but it happens. One of my girls told me, Dad, what are you doing? You teach all my life. I'm married now. I have kids. I said, because I know how God shaped my life to trials, to tribulations. But let me tell you something. I'm the happiest man on this planet. And let me tell you something. I don't want to live another 30, 40, 50 years. If God wants me right now, or not right now, it's, it's going to be very hard for you guys, but, but he can take me anytime. I spoke with a, a sister at church last Sunday, and she said, Avram, Pastor Avram, I want to live another 50 years. And I looked at her, I said, I don't want to live not even a day more. What do you mean you're the pastor? I said, because I'm in love with him. And if he allows me to live another 20, 30 years, there is one thing in my life I don't want to do. I don't want to get a... Nu, nu vreau să devin un, un stubborn bătrân. Ok? Un morocănos. Grumpy old man. I, there is, I think there is a movie about grumpy. You don't want. Allow God to work in your life. Start with this. Get in ministry. Serve him with all. And then when a thorn comes, this is the wisdom that God needs to give you. Sometimes... God comes, she ne jordanește. Why? Because we allow sin in our lives. But sometimes you're okay. You have a good life. You want to serve God with all your life. But because he doesn't want to have surprises at the end. Someone told me, I was up, I was up, I said, listen, how you finish is important. And many times God is allowing to push thorns in our lives in order to keep us Humbled. Să venim la biserică, to come at 9.30 or whatever time you start, and you start praying. Because if I don't have no limitations, no thorns in my life, I will say, hey, I'm somebody. Do you understand my heart? God's heart is for you. God wants to use you mightily. If God is ever going to use you in a great way, expect a thorn. And when it comes, then you know, in a way, you're going to smile. And you're going to go on the Itza time and you're going to pray. And you're going to continue to serve. Because you know that thing is for your benefit. That thing is for my benefit. Why should I be grateful for my weaknesses? De ce să fiu mulțumitor pentru slăbiciune? Number one, it guarantees God's help. Number two, it prevents arrogance. Number three, it causes me to value others. That's important. We live in a Christian society. We don't value others. We only value ourselves. I'm the most best preacher, singer. We don't value others. Why? Should I be grateful for my weaknesses? Because it causes me to value others. One of the dangers of strength is that it breeds an independent spirit. And that's why God is allowing you. You might say, man, Pastor Abraham, let nu mai predicat așa când o să fie o de 50. No, no, no. If you want to be used mightily by God, it starts in your young age. And you will go, grow strongly in the Lord. If I don't have any weaknesses in my life, I tend to think I don't need anybody. God made us to value each other. To value each other. Să vedem valoare în fiecare. Dar cum pot eu să văd valoare în fratele meu dacă eu le am pe toate și toate merg bine? Știi când? 
Când Dumnezeu îngăduie limitări și țăpușuri în viața mea și slăbiciuni și mă duc înaintea lui Dumnezeu. Când vin în biserică, vin smerit și zic, Doamne, aici ai fratele și sora, is my younger brother and sister and the youth. Oh, he or she has great value. Because we all have great values in God's eyes. Amen? One of the biggest lies in our society is that significance is the same thing as prominence. We tend to think if you're well known, then what you have to say is very important. Just look around you. But you can be a celebrity and be living a totally fără valoare, o viață fără valoare. And I put, a, I put something and it, it might be funny in a way. Your nose may be a very prominent feature of your body. But it's not very significant. Okay? You could lose your nose and live the rest of your life. Okay? How do we value our brothers and sisters? 1 Corinthians 12, 22. A sum of the parts that seem weak, weakest and least important are really the most necessary. By my mult, mădularele trupului care par mai slabe sunt de neapărată trebuință. You make a strong rope, rope not by making one solid cord, but by putting a lot of strands together. That's the value of unity and the value of a church family. Amen? Value each other. But I'm going to value my brothers and sisters when I know that I have limitations and weaknesses. Ecclesiastes 4, 12. A person standing alone can be attacked and defeated, but two can stand back to back and conquer. Three are even better, for a triple braided cord is not easily broken. Și dacă se scoală cineva asupra unuia, doi pot să stea împotrivă și funia împletită în trei. Nu se rupe ușor. Why should I be grateful for my weakness? Because it causes me to value others. Let's move on. Why should I be grateful for my weakness? Because it gives me a, a ministry. It gives me a ministry. You might say, wow. From your weakness, from your limitation, God can start a great ministry. Îmi dă posibilitatea unei slujiri autentice atunci când sunt mulțumitor pentru limitările și pentru slăbiciunile mele. God puts you on earth not just to live for yourself, but to help other people. Your greatest ministry will flow out of your weaknesses. Your greatest life message is going to come out of your deepest hurt. Your greatest life message is going to come out of your deepest hurt. Just look around you. Cine poate să fie sensitive la cel care suferă de cancer? You know who is the best that will be sensitive? The one who went through cancer. Two Sundays ago, no, yeah, two Sundays ago, there was a Saturday night when somebody called me. Frate Avram, a brother from, from Agape Bible Church, with him happened exactly the same happened to me many years back. He broke his ankle. He wanted to do some, I don't know, maybe roof cleaning or something, and he fell down, and he broke his ankle. You know what happened with me? You know what happened? I could not sleep all night. I went to church in the morning, and from church, I went home for a few minutes, and I said, I must go and see this brother. You know why? Because he broke his ankle. Because I had my ankle broken, and I have three plaques, one, two, three, and shurubur, and even a Phillips capul de la Philip Screwdriver, the doctor forgot it, l-a uitat înăuntru. And he asked me, Avram, are you going to sue the Providence Hospital? I said, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. It's still there. But you know, from your weakest 
wound, God can use you for a great ministry. I could not stay at home. I went there. You know what happened? I don't, have, I don't feel pain anymore. But because he broke his ankle, it's like the pain came back. It was, was in, only in my mind and in my heart. Nu mă durut piciorul, dar pentru că am simțit. I value others și am simțit. Atunci când eu am fost lobit, atunci când eu am fost accidentat, atunci când eu am stat acasă luni și luni de zile, când cineva aș rupe piciorul, I'm running more than for other, cum să zic, boli. Okay? It gives me a ministry. The very thing that caused you the most grief and pain, God can use as a message to other people to encourage them. Amen? And we don't learn this lesson. How do you, I mean, when you speak with somebody does, that does not know God, and if you, are, you had some addictions in your life, and Christ really made you free, and you're a free man, and you meet somebody, and you see, and you can read that he goes through the same issue that you went, God can give you a great ministry to go after those people and save them with God's help. Amen? Deci din slăbiciuni, din, din lucruri care, care ne-au ținut departe de Dumnezeu, Dumnezeu poate să dea un ministry și să-i încurajăm. The thing you're most embarrassed about, the thing you're most ashamed of, the thing you don't want anybody else to know about, God wants to use that to encourage other people. If we understand this, it's going to be great. You're going to have a church. You're going to go outside the church, you're going to go in youth department, men's ministry, ladies' ministry, and you're going to look for people to help. Pain gave us sensibility, sensibility to the hurts of others. Like I said, pain, and it happened many years back, I was very sensitive to the person that had an accident. If you want to have a Christ-like ministry, that means sometimes other people are going to be helped, encouraged, and even healed by the wounds in your life. Okay? Jesus Christ received wounds in his body, and we all benefited from it. Asta înseamnă Dumnezeu să ne folosească. 2 Corinthians 1, 3 and 4 Binecuvântat să fie Dumnezeu, Tatăl nostru, Iisus Hristos, Părintele Îndurărilor și Dumnezeul oricărei mângăieri, care ne mângâie în toate necazurile noastre, pentru ca prin mângăierea cu care noi înșine suntem mângăiați de Dumnezeu, să putem mângăia pe cei ce se află în vreun necaz. That's how ministry is born. From your weakness, from your limitation, From a thorn that you have in your life, when you give your life 100% to Christ, Dumnezeu va naște un ministry in your life. When you, when you have walked a mile in someone else's shoes, you are uniquely equipped to help them through their problems. God never wastes a hurt. Și uneori românii nu înțelegem lucrul ăsta. Uneori, nu suntem transparenți. Asta mi-e limitarea mea. This is my issue. Asta mi este slăbiciunea. Hai să spun cum Dumnezeu a folosit slăbiciunea și limitarea din viața mea și cum un ministru s-a născut. Just few years back, Ragap had happened. We had a few cases of cancer in church. And two of them were very young one sister and one brother, very young families with kids, and we prayed, and God has touched them. But from those wounds and sicknesses and thorns or whatever you call, God opened a great ministry in the church. This is how God works. This is how God works. Whenever you go out and share your strength, that always creates competition. And I'm speaking for the youth and for the leaders in Agape here, because this subject I preached in Agape. 
Când îți scoți în evidență capacitatea, tăria, aproape întotdeauna creezi competiție. And God doesn't want this. But whenever you share your weaknesses, that creates community, family. Când îți scoți în evidență slăbiciunea, limitările, aproape întotdeauna creezi relație și comunitate. Ai biserică. What should I do in my life? Should I share my strengths? I don't think we need to share it. We can share our weaknesses that will create unity, community, church. Vulnerability is the key to intimacy and fellowship. Vulnerabilitatea este cheia intimității și părtășiei. God always uses weak people. He turns weakness into strength. Deci am vorbit până acum de slăbiciuni. You said, you night, you might say, Avram, what is this? It has to do with you. With you to start at 17, at 15, at 20, at 25, to know that God can use you in your limitations and weaknesses. And he wants to keep you humbled and he will allow things in your life and in my life to keep me humbled in such a way that I will be efficient in my ministry. Then when you want to serve God, when you want to be involved in some ministries, ask these questions. Are you ready to say, God, I'm yours, use me? You know how God is using? It's, it's, it's almost like I, I, I had in Agape, I had like o tulpină de copac, name, name, așa, un, un trunc de copac, and then I put a cross next to it. This is who I am. Eu ca un, o bucată din, trumpi, din tulpina unui copac. But God wants to shape me and mold me in such a way that cross will be, se vede crucea lui Hristos în viața mea. This is how God works. I'll finish with some examples. Because we spoke about weaknesses. Uh, we spoke about why should I be grateful for my weaknesses. We spoke about that it guarantees God's help. It prevents arrogance. It causes me to value others. It gives me a ministry. You might say, Avram, show me in the scripture. I'll give you a few examples. Moses. Anger was Moses' greatest weakness. He killed an Egyptian, broke the tables of stone, hit the rock twice, yet only he and Jesus were called meek in the Bible, which means anger under control. That's one example. That was his weakness. Moses. Abraham. Abraham is called the, is called the father of faith. But his greatest weakness was his lack of faith. One time he had his wife pretend to be his sister because he doubted that God could protect him from the enemy who wanted her. Gedeon. When God wanted Gedeon to become Israel's deliverer from the Midianites, he called him a mighty man of valor. Gideon was hiding from the enemy at the time, but God still used him. Weaknesses, limitations. Peter, another example. Jesus called Peter a rock, but he was anything but stable. He was impulsive and violent, and he even denied the Lord. But look at him on the day of Pentecost, after God used his weakness to become strength. And Jacob, Jacob was a de deceiver, a manipulator. He made one mess after another and then ran from it, from it. He ran his entire life until the night that he wrestled with God. He said, I'm not letting you go until you bless me. And God said, okay, I'll bless you. He touched Jacob at his greatest point of strength, the, the tight that helped him run. Forever after, he would walk with a limb. Why? 
so he could, couldn't run from his weaknesses anymore. And so he would have a constant reminder to depend on God. Just think about Jacob. Gândiți-vă la Iacob. Dumnezeu i-a îngăduit în el. Și când el mergea șchiop și s-a dus spre casa lui și nu mai putea și văd o grămadă de oameni cu diferite situații de felul ăsta. Și l-a întrebat, Iacob, ce ai făcut? You know what he said? Nu a zis, păi Dumnezeu ăsta care eu mi-am pus încrederea în el. Uite, nu a zis, am fost binecuvântat. Wow! Pentru că he knew for the rest of his life that thing will remind that God is in control. Asta a fost Iacob. God wants to take the greatest weakness in your life and turn it into a strength. This is the bottom line. Hebrew 11, 32-34. Citesc în românește. Și ce voi mai zice? Căci nu mi-ar ajunge vremea dacă aș vrea să vorbesc de Gedeon, de Barak, de Samson, de Ieftaie, de David, de Samuel și de proroci. Prin credință au cucerit ei împărății, au făcut dreptate, au căpătat făgăduințe, au astupat gurile leilor, au stins puterea focului, au scăpat de ascuțișul sabiei, s-au vindecat de boli, din slăbiciune au fost făcut stari, au fost viteji în războaie, au pus pe fugă oștirile vrășmașe. And in English says, whose weakness was turned into strength. This is not a subject that I'm going to come to church and I'm going to say everything is great. I'm going to put a mask on my pe fața mea. I'm going to come to church. No one knows that I have issues. I have limitations in my life. These are great men and women of God that I read about them. And every single one had a limitation, had a weakness, but he, they allowed God to work in their weaknesses. Mă rog în seara aceasta ca Dumnezeu să-ți folosească limitarea și slăbiciunea așa cum El cade, crede de cuvință. Amin? He can use your weaknesses. I want to encourage you tonight. And why not? Can we I want the worship team. Would you please come forward? But what I want to do, I did not have in my mind, but I think maybe it's okay. Maybe there are people in this audience, in church, in Biserica, Latineret. You have limitations. You have things in your life that you know there are weaknesses. Sunt slăbiciuni, sunt limitări. Again, pun paranteză, slăbiciunea, limitarea, nu e viață trăită în păcat, no. Sunt lucruri care te ține dependent de Dumnezeu și vezi că you really need God's help. Can you come before Him tonight and say, God, I want you to use my life. But tonight, I'm going to give it to you. I'm going to come before you very open, very honest with my limitations, with my weaknesses. This is it, God. Use them. Pune la încercare. Try God in your life. Receive that and be thankful for the limitations and weaknesses. And you will see that God from that limitation and weaknesses, from those weaknesses, God can use you mightily. There are things in our lives that we're going to carry with us to the day we die. Those are the moments that God has worked in our lives through thorns, to things that we did not like it, but those things were blessings for my life and for your life because you and I were serving with all our hearts this God, Christ. Can we stand up? And I'm asking, be honest with you. And I am sure that Agape, here in Orange County, the youth department, young men and young women, God will use you mightily, but you have to start somewhere. And you know that what's this starting point? Is to recognize before the Lord that you have limitations and weaknesses. And my prayer is that God will give you wisdom 
and will allow the Word of God and the Holy Spirit to work in your life in such a way that you will know that what you have in your life will be used by God mightily. Which we invite. If somebody wants, if it's one person or two or ten, persoane care zice, God, I want you to use me, but I want you to, to să minoiești mintea într-un fel. Renew my mind to understand the value, the importance of tones, limitations, weaknesses, and allow me, God, to bring it forth to you. Este careva aici în seara aceasta care zice, Doamne, în slăbiciunea mea, în limitările mele, Doamne, vreau să mă folosești. Dar vreau în seara aceasta să fiu deschis cu Tine, Doamne, să ți le aduc înaintea Ta și îți spun, nu pentru că eu spun, pentru că Scriptura vorbește. Și Dumnezeu îi spune apostolului Pavel, atunci când ești slab, atunci ești tare. Atunci când recunoști limitarea și slăbiciunea și știi că e mâna lui Dumnezeu și modelarea lui Dumnezeu să semeni cu Hristos, de atunci începe ministry, real ministry in your life, from that point on. Would you please come forward? Who wants to come before the Lord and say, God, I want you to use me. And you know what? I am the first one. I still have limitations in my life. I still have weaknesses in my life. But I know that in my life is also God. And He is in control. And He can use my limitations in such a way that His name will be glorified. Amen. Dacă există careva, if there is somebody who wants to come forward, would you please come forward? We're going to pray. We're going to sing and we're going to pray. And my prayer is tonight that God will use the youth of this church mightily. But we need to start the right way. We need to allow Him and we need to be humbled enough to say, God, this is my limitation. And parents, mă adresez părinților, Priviți la copiii dumneavoastră, vedeți-le chemarea și vedeți-le și limitările și slăbiciunile și discutați cu ei. This is how you grow up your child. You talk to him, you talk to her. Copilă, ai un plan extraordinar, băiatul meu, un plan deosebit. Dumnezeu te cheamă, dar uite, asta văd. Hai să vorbim de slăbiciunea ta. Hai să vorbim de limitările tale. Și vreau să-ți spun că Dumnezeu privește la inima noastră și în slăbiciuni și în limitările noastre, Dumnezeu poate să facă un ministru care să țâșnească și să umple zona aceasta și orașul acesta și familiile noastre și bisericile noastre. Încă nu am experimentat ce poate să facă Dumnezeu cu tineri și tinere, young men and young women, bărbați și femei, care zic, Doamne, depind 100% de Tine, Doamne. Asta e limitarea mea, asta este problema mea, Rezolvă, Doamne, ajută-mă! Și s-ar putea ca Dumnezeu în time, after a period of time, to take that thing away. But if it will not ever take that thing away, trebuie să fii mulțumitor lui Dumnezeu să zici, Doamne, harul Tău îmi este de ajuns, Doamne. Harul Tău îmi este de ajuns. Mulți vrem să scăpăm de lucrurile care ne țin smeriți, ne țin aproape de Dumnezeu. Yes! Vrem vindecare, yes, vrem atâtea și atâtea lucruri, dar haide să zicem, Doamne, mai mult decât orice, voia Ta, amin? Ca Dumnezeu să ne folosească. Dacă mai există cineva să vină, would you please come forward? Haideți puțin mai la mișloc aici, would you please?